Hi, and welcome inside the ACU TV or studio. I'm Will Dalton. And I'm Jalen Ward. Our top stories today include the Eclipse, Film Fest, and another series win for the baseball team. This is the Optimus Newscast. The Venture Out Market will take place today from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Student vendors will be in the campus mall selling different items, and students are welcome to shop around and purchase some. Last week, ACU students traveling to Waco, Texas experienced a full solar eclipse. The optimist Jonah Norcross went on the road with students to share how they celebrated totality. Burgers, yard games, card games, and telescopes. These are some of the happenings at the ACU Solar Eclipse Excursion. I'm Dr. Larry Eisenhower. I'm one of the physics faculty in our engineering and physics department. Uh, this is the Total Eclipse event kind of being run by our department and our Society of Physics students. We created a ride sharing system. We got a connection with some land out here and we all got out to the path of totality so we could see the total solar eclipse. During a solar eclipse, the path where the sun can be seen completely eclipsed by the moon is only a few hundred miles in diameter. Abilene falls just outside of that zone, and so many students have traveled to other areas, like Waco, to see this cosmic event. People are really enjoying the weather, the land is beautiful, we've got blue bonnets blooming, people are just out here grilling and having a great time. The sun is currently only partially covered by the moon, and students use protective eyewear to view the eclipse until it reaches the renowned four-minute totality period, which can be safely seen by the naked eye. Already it's getting darker. We're about four minutes to totality. Uh, the colors look different. It's cooler. It's windier. It is a weird thing right now. I know it looks like it's the camera settings right now, but it's not. It is just darker outside. And then the eclipse reached totality. It's an incredible experience. It looked like twilight at 1.30 in the afternoon, crickets started chirping, it got rapidly cooler, and of course, there's the sun. It looked absolutely surreal. These are some photos captured by Dr. Eisenhower at the eclipse site. It was insane, like you saw like the, the, the circle, like the, the little like last bit of light, and then it suddenly became this like sci-fi feeling? It was just, it was crazy. It was absolutely bonkers. I have been waiting for something like this for decades of my life, and somehow it still impressed me. Thanks, Jonah. The Pepperdine School of Public Policy will conduct an informational session on Thursday. This is to learn about the areas of specialization and scholarship opportunities. It will take place from 11.45 a.m. to 1 p.m. in Hardin Administration Building Room 128, and lunch will be provided. To RSVP, email amanda.spell at acu.edu. The International Justice Mission is having a craft night on Thursday. This is a relaxing evening for all students and will be in BSB 121 starting at 6 p.m. ACU Film Fest is Friday and will showcase multiple works from students. It is a night of fun and students are encouraged to get there early to take a photo on the Film Fest red carpet. This is the 20th year for Film Fest. This event is at the historic Paramount Theater at 7 p.m. and it is black tie optional. With sports is Will. Will? Baseball won yet another series this weekend, taking down non-conference opponent UC Davis two games to one. The Wildcats opened up the series grabbing two mercy rule victories on Friday and Saturday, winning 10 to nothing and 12 to two, both in seven innings. However, the team came just short of the sweep on Sunday, falling 6-5 after the Mustangs grabbed the go-ahead run in the top of the ninth. The team stays at home this weekend where they will host Cal Baptist for a three-game set with Friday's first pitch set for 6:05. Softball took home a series win this weekend, taking down Stephen F. Austin two games to one. The Wildcats took Friday's game 2-1 in the top half of Saturday's doubleheader 9-4, but were not able to grab the final win, falling 2 to nothing in the series finale. The team heads back home this week to host UT Arlington for a three-game series, with Friday's first pitch set for six. Men's tennis locked up the number three seed in the WAC tournament this weekend after a four to three set victory over UT RGV. The Wildcats were able to grab the doubles point early to take a one to nothing lead, but UT RGV would storm back to take the lead at three sets to two. However, the Wildcats were able to pull out the last two sets and take the victory and will now face the number two seed, Grand Canyon, on Friday with matches starting at 9 a.m. That's all for this week's Optimus Newscast. I'm Will Dalton. And I'm Jalen Ward. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.